Yes, sir. Let's go, YouTube. Come on. Welcome to my reaction channel. Big announcement, big announcement, man. If you haven't looked at my channel, I hit 200 subs, man. I know, I know, I know. I, I hit 200 subs, and I can't be more grateful, man. I really appreciate y'all, man. All I can say is, bro, stick with me, bro. Stay on this journey, because I'm trying to get to the top, for real. I really appreciate the 200, 228 people who subbed to me. That sub count right now. If it's not, I'll throw it here. Yeah, man, I really appreciate y'all. I really do. Like, I'm not even gonna lie. I really, I really do appreciate y'all. I'm just a nigga sitting sitting in sitting in his room reacting to videos bro it's, it's it's crazy it's crazy for real all i ask is that y'all stick with me you know if you're new here my name is quade and um i react to videos man. look i'm gonna need you to subscribe bro subscribe man and hit that post notification bell because i post every week yeah and go ahead and comment too comment that you're new comment if you're new we just gonna get right into this video though, bro today i'm not gonna lie i looked at this thumbnail i had to react to it i had to I had to, I had to, bro. It's a channel called Soft White Underbelly. If you're not familiar, they have 3.24 million subscribers, very popular. They post a lot of a lot of videos about people on Melrose. It's a dude on Melrose. He brings people in for interviews and he just talks to them, gets to know them and tries to help them out with the revenue that he makes from the channel. And it's a very, very, very beautiful thing. But today's video, he interviewed an Appalachian woman. Her name is Shannon. Basically, we just gonna see what she's talking about. See, so you get to know her, you know what I'm saying? Like, look at the thumbnail. I think this shit is gonna be crazy. So we just gonna get into it, man. I'm not gonna sock your heads off. I'm gonna throw the screen recording up on the screen right about now. And uh, let's get into it, man. All right, so Shannon. Shannon, uh, tell me about your family. Uh, your parents were related, do you think? Yes, cousins. Your parents were cousins? Yeah. Oh. The met goes on here in West Virginia, doesn't it? Unfortunately. That's actually fucked up. Like, that's actually fucked up. Her parents were cousins? Bro, what? Like, what do you... All right. Let's just get into it. Let's just get and into it. And you told me your grandparents were also my, related? Either my great grandparents or my, I think she said my great grandparents, but I know she said one set of my grandparents were cousins and also I was like, ugh. And you grew up where? Clarksburg, West Virginia. Not too far from here. Clarksburg, the, the center of the state. Hey, Clarksburg, I know to stay away from there. <laughs> I know to stay away from Clarksburg, nigga. They doing some shit up there. Oh, nah. Nah, for real, like, oh, nah. Bro, what the fuck? All right, let's get back into the video, man. Right. And tell me about your childhood. How, how was it? Abusive and dysfunctional. Oh, uh, damn, I'm sorry to hear that. In what ways? Sexual abuse, physical, emotional, and mental. Mm. From, from who? Damn, that's, that's the whole spectrum, isn't it? Fuck that motherfucker. Who did that shit to you? For real, back into the video, though. All family members. All family members? Oh, nah. That's supposed to be your family, bro. And they fucking mentally, sexually, and physically abusing you? That's fucked up. I'm sorry she was born into that family, bro. And that's her actual family. Like, oh, that sucks. That sucks. Back into the video, though. Like, my dad, my brother, my cousin, my mother, my brother, my uncle. Damn, bro. At what age did this start? It started at five. Five? And went on for how long? As long as I lived with my dad, the breaking point was I went to um, in my room and ended up getting my back broke with a two by four from my father. He was whooping you, huh? Damn. That's how I met my first husband. Okay, pause. When I grew up, I got whoopings. You know, I got hit with the belt buckle and shit. The belt buckle. My mama told me to go get a switch off the tree. You know what I'm saying? She Meet me with a switch or whatever, fuck. You know, some light shit. The nigga hit you with a two by four, bro? Nah, that's crazy. He broke your back with a two by four. What type of aggression do you need in your body? And what happened to you that day to where you felt like you were going to pick up a two by four and hit your own child? What's up, bro? Real talk, like real talk, though. Like, how fucked up can you be? The nigga hit you with a two by four, bro? Nah, that's crazy as fuck. Back into the video. He was a sergeant cop. So you were married? Yes. He's deceased though. And how was that marriage? Abusive, but at that age, I was 19 and I just wanted security. Yeah. When, when you say abusive, what, what, what kind of stuff happened? He, the... Nah, she, nah, what the, f hold on, hold on, hold on. 
Hold on. Hold on. She said he. Don't tell me this nigga fucking cut her fingers off. Yo. Nah, like, yo. Yo. Okay, let's get into it, bro. Back into the video. Back into the video. Uh, my first husband cut this finger off with a turkey cutter, like math, and then broke this to the point I had to have surgery and it, a uh, pin put it in it, and then it got um, infected with grain, gangrene, and oh. he, then they had to take it. Fuck. So you lost two fingers? Yes. No. From uh, abuse. And you told me one of them was because he slammed your finger in a car door on purpose? Yeah. It is bad because he sat there and, like, when he caught the houses on fire, two months apart then like he acted like the big hero for coming to the hospital and uh, like acting like he was shocked when he knew he'd done it all along fucking hell fuck that nigga bro wow and, and you were married a second time yes he is abusive but he kicked me in my back where i had, had surgery mm. just right before and i should have left then but I always felt like I had to have a man to make me important. Do you feel like the childhood you had kind of led you on this path of abusive relationships and very much so being mm. attracted to men that very much so are capable of that? Mm -hmm. mm. Look, if I got one thing to say to all the young girls out here, bro, if you're 19, 18, you don't need a nigga to make you feel to make you feel like you're something or someone. You don't. You don't be independent, bro. I encourage all my youngins, all the kids younger than me, bro, be independent, bro. Learn to love yourself before you start to try to love someone else. I'm learning that right now. Learn to love yourself before you start loving somebody else. Cause how the fuck you gonna love someone else when you don't even know how to love yourself? How the fuck you gonna take care of someone else when you can't even take care of yourself? It's a grown mindset that a lot of kids and a lot of people who are 19, 20, 21, 22 don't have, and they don't know that they need to learn this shit. Learn to love every single thing about you. And if you can't figure out a way to learn to love every single thing about you, then learn how to change that if you're willing to, you know, if you want to. Learn how to change it and be comfortable with the fact that you're going to change it and be comfortable with the fact that it is what it is right now, but you know, down the road, it will change, you feel me? So just like, you know what I'm saying? Just love yourself. Learn to love yourself before you can love someone else. The niggas that she was fucking with, bro, did not love themselves. And that's part of the reason why, you know, they, you know what I'm saying? It's fucked up, bro. But back into the video, man. It was, so, the abuse was so bad that my mama said the other day that her and granny was talking and I could go turn to a woman or I could marry a black man because black man's there and take care of their women hey that's facts though that's facts but what's wrong with marrying a black man <laughs> i understand they from west virginia and they probably got a little bit of racist tension but i'll excuse it <laughs> black men you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying the melanin it do something it do something to these women bro real talk <laughs> i'm fooling back into the video man do you have children I have two grown. Um, when he, when Don caught the house on fire, they were taken. And mm. then my dad, because of being so rich, sat there and paid the um, mm. judges and the HHR off to get custody. Mm. So they're in Florida now, and I haven't got to see or hear from them since 2005. Damn. Wow. That's tough. They said that was part of the reason I had my massive heart attack in 2015. You had a heart attack? Mm-hmm. Bro, people, she's covering up her hand. She's embarrassed about it. And I hope she gets to a point in life where she's not embarrassed about her hand. Like, it's not your fault. The shit that caused it is not your fault, you know. Accept that as who you are. Because, I mean, in reality, she's not going to get her fingers back unless she gets a prosthetic or something. But, like, I'm very big on body positivity, bro. Like, if there's something wrong with you, own that shit, bro. People with, I think it's vitiligo, where, like, your skin is a different color. It's a different pigment in, like, certain spots. I think it's called vitiligo. I'm not sure. But I'm, like, 80% sure. <laughs> But like people have been like, go. a lot of people are embarrassed about it, bro. My thing is, bro, again, going back to my point, learning to love yourself, bro. Learn, love everything about you, bro. Love everything about you because if you love something about yourself and you get into a relationship or you have like a friend or something like that and you're all the way 100% confident about what you got going on with your body and your mindset, you know what I'm saying? Who is that other person to question it? 
You know what I mean? And I'm talking about positive things, not like narcissism or, you know what I'm saying? But I'm rambling. I'm rambling. Let's get back to the video. <laughs> so your first husband burned down the house? Yeah, the, the first one. That's crazy burned, as fuck. He burned the first house. He started in our the daughter's first bedroom and the closet. And then like three days short of it being two months apart, then it ended up having another one. But the, his, the officers below him came to me each privately, three of them, saying if I'd leave, and mm. I couldn't, because I still believe him for his salvation, which uh. did happen. Is religion a big part of your life? Okay. Yes, sir. Mm. And which religion do you follow? This Christianity, believing okay. in the Trinity. I tried doing right. I tried being good to people, doing the right thing. Yes, ma'am. But I'm not perfect, far from it. Amen. Amen. Do you have any relationship today with your parents and your family? My mama and my grandmother is fiction passed away. And but I call her mom too because she raised me when all pretty much when the sexual abuse, like whenever she could get me, she had me. But she's fiction passed, so but yeah, she wants me and Mama to be real close when she passes. We've come a long way, though. So you have some kind of relationship with her? Yeah. I told her I forgave her. Only problem is I have a real difficult time forgiving myself because my dad demanded perfection. Mm, okay. How old are you now? I'll be 44, November the 30th of this year. What's the hardest part of your life today? Okay. Self-acceptance. Ooh, she said she hit it right on the um, head. Not beating myself up over, like, it, I think from my childhood. So she's hit for I expect real. to be perfect because that's what dad demanded. Mm. And I was always scared I'd get beat or sexually abused. So I always tried to be good enough and... I wanted to go back to college mm. and make people proud. Oh, she's crying. And it's like I'm not good enough for myself. Mm. Mama says, you need to love yourself. But when I look at myself, I can't say that I do. I love parts of me. But if I dare make a mistake, I don't let myself live it down. I feel for him, man. Damn. And you see the relationship between your childhood and, and where you are today, right? Yeah. I'm in counseling, or at least I was before I moved up here, but mm. so many people was begging me to come back. And you can run from your problems, and uh, but until you get the quote unquote balls to face them, mm -hmm. they're always going to haunt you. Mm hmm. And, like, I used to be an addict thinking that that would be, if I'd known myself, that it wouldn't exist. And yeah, that never works. Never works out in the end. <laughs> but I got, um... Yeah, I, I've tried numbing. I've tried killing myself. Like, the earliest attempt, well, there's only been two actual attempts. Mm -hmm. And one was when I was seven, right after my... Um, cousin sat there and had sexually abused me. Mm. And my mom just walked in as I was fixing the push in the knife. Fuck. I still have a little Fuck. invention in my, in my chest. Fuck. And you were using drugs at one point? Oh, yeah. Bad, bad, yeah. It helps you forget? Yeah. It was uh, like pretty much like a numbing agent. What was she using? Huh? It was so bad that I was dating a um, dealer and was one, I'd ask him why there were so many people in and out. He never would tell me. Mm. But, um, oh yeah, major crack addict. And then I told God, if you don't give me off this shit, I'm gonna die. Mm. Hey, bro, I feel for him, man. I really do. That is some wild shit. It's crazy to see what people have been through. It makes it look like what I've been through is nothing. And I'm only 20 years old. I got a long way to go. It's crazy. But back into the video, man. And instantly in that moment, he answered. 
have you used since? Of, not of crack. I've used meth like three times and heroin three times. I shot up once, um, well, no, twice. They did something called K4. I don't know what it was. Oh, don't do no K4. Today you don't use? No. Do you drink? Occasionally. I try, I try not to make a habit of it, though. That's not a problem. Right? It doesn't control me anymore. Thank God. Where do you hope your life goes from here? You seem to have a good handle on, on your issues. I'd like to help other women and men because a lot of people have the misconception wow. that men don't get abused. Wow. Wow. She has a good head on her shoulders because look, peep this, bro. After all the shit she's been through and just watching nine minutes of her speak, you can tell she's been through a lot and a lot of like fucked up shit. A lot of fucked up shit. But her end goal and the point she is in her life right now, she wants to help people. A lot of motherfuckers go through shit and they don't give a fuck about nobody else. And they're selfish, self-centered, and they just don't give a fuck about anyone else, right? They'll never be in a relationship. They're a loner. You feel me? A lot of motherfuckers are like that in this world. But it's crazy to me to see that she still has a good heart and she wants to help people. And that's low-key inspiring. That's very motivating, bro. Real talk. Well, we got a little bit left in this video, so we gonna watch it, and I'm gonna give y'all my thoughts on this video. And I also want y'all to put y'all thoughts on this video in, in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think, man. Real talk. Go back into the video, man. And yet, I had a best friend that did, so I, I hope to be like an abuse counselor one day. I think by helping others, you can help yourself too. Whole tea. Right. Whole tea. You're only as sick as your secrets. Whole tea, bro. And that's a big family secret. Honest too, honest right, as hell. Well, thank you so much for telling your story. Thank you. And good luck with everything. Thank you, Shannon. You too. Thank you. Yes, sir, man. <laughs> Woo! That was a that was a crazy video, man. Hey, y'all go to this GoFundMe, you know what I'm saying? Go to the GoFundMe campaign, bro. Those type of people deserve blessings in life, and I believe that me spreading and reacting to this video, I hope some of y'all go to go to this GoFundMe, donate to this channel, you know, maybe some of that money will touch her and help her out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, that, that, that wraps up the video. This was a crazy video, bro. It brought a lot of things into perspective for me, personally. I hope in some weird way this video helped you, and uh, the things that I said in this video, I hope, you know, they maybe touched your heart or, you know, helped you out in a certain way, but just going into the theme of this channel it's like i'm here to make you laugh and if you're down i'm here to help you out of that you feel me because no cap i've been through some shit in life and i'm only 20 years old and i've i struggle with it you know so i'm really just here to just give you my opinions on life and try to help you through some of the shit that i might have gone through or that i can speak on or you know wh whatever it is you feel me but I'm, I'm gonna get you up out of here i'm not gonna press you about the like button it's not one of those videos where i press you about the like button yeah thank you for watching the video all the way through man i'm gonna need you to like the video though i would really appreciate it you feel me i didn't say this but a link to soft white underbelly the channel will be in the description and a link to the original video will be in the description go run it up you feel me it got hella views but you know hopefully i push a couple views to this channel hopefully y'all see this shit again i'm gonna need y'all to subscribe man and turn on the post notification bell so you'll be notified every time i post a video i post every week yeah man that's that's about it bro let me get y'all up out of here there is a motto that i say and here it goes if you fuck with my vibe like and subscribe man that's the motto around here get used to it you feel me and that's all i got to fucking say man we out we love